Um, I have been a member of Austin DSA for about a year and a half now. Um, and I'm here tonight to talk with you all about tech worker organizing. Um, so I just wanted to start out just like talk, like basically just ask everyone here, if you want to um, unmute, say something or drop it in the chat, like why, why is it important for us as socialists to think about tech companies um, and just the tech industry in general? If anyone wants to like chime in, drop in the chat. They monetize right. our data, our information. Yeah, for sure. Big tech controls us, yeah. Corporate elite, half the economy, for sure. All these things, um, yeah. Um, so um, I think another, just the big reason is um, that they are just so powerful, as a lot of people were saying. Um, they are among the richest companies in the United States. So uh, 10 of the top 100 highest earning companies in the US are tech companies, including Amazon, Apple, um, Google, Microsoft, Facebook. Um, yeah, and so they just have all this money, all this power. Um, and in addition to that, a lot of the richest people in the world um, come from tech. So Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Elon Musk, um, obviously from Tesla, from SpaceX, from PayPal, Bill Gates, Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg uh, from Facebook, um, Sergey Brin and Larry Page from um, Google. Um, yeah, and they just have all this money, all this power. Um, and the question is, what do they do with all this power? Um, and I think one of the best examples of that is Prop 22 in California. Um, so basically, the way a lot of tech companies work um, and their business model is they, um, the only way they may, are able to be profitable at any point is um, if they treat their workers very poorly, if they don't pay them um, very much. Um, yeah. So the way they do that is they um, mark them as contractors instead of full employees, which denies them minimum wage, it denies them um, benefits like health care, um, paid sick leave, um, unemployment insurance. Um, and that's just how these companies are able to make money by denying all their employees the rights that they deserve. Um, and so there was this bill in California in 2019 to fix this and basically mark all these um, workers, uh, tech companies as full employees that deserve these benefits. Um, and it passed and it was amazing. Um, but then all these tech companies said, this isn't great or not for us at least. So they said they got this ballot initiative in California, Prop 22, which basically made a carve out just for these app-based workers like Instacart, like DoorDash, Uber, um, that says prop, that says AB5, which gave them full rights as employees, um, does not apply to tech companies pretty much. Um, and they poured about $200 million into this. Um, which is an obscene amount of money. They basically bought their way into rewriting labor law in the state of California. Um, and it now takes seven eighths of the California legislature to um, undo Prop 22, um, which is never gonna happen. Um, and they're trying to do this around the country. I have seen it, I think in Illinois, they're already trying to get a similar thing to Prop 22 passed. I'm sure they're trying to get it with the Biden administration. I know that Kamala Harris, she has a relative that works um, at Uber, like a very close relative. I forget who it was exactly. Um, yeah, and they're just staffed throughout the administration. So it's not inconceivable that the Biden administration could do something like this around the country, which would be bad. Um, yeah, and then just another thing that I thought was very funny, this um, ad from Uber, I think probably last summer in the fall, um, around the time of the George Floyd protests, um, they say, if you tolerate racism, delete Uber, which is saying, um, yeah, I don't know, it's pretty obvious, but it's just after they treat their drivers who, um, I don't know, don't treat them well, um, a lot of them are people of color, black people, brown people, they say, if you tolerate racism, delete Uber, and I just think that's funny. Um, so the next question is, what do we do about this? Um, yeah, if anyone wants to like speak out or throw things in the chat, feel free. Um, give you a minute. Like, 
uh, I was, my mom lives in California and um, I was there like right before the election. Um, and so I was like reading through all the propositions that were gonna go through and Prop 10, 22, like on the outside, the language of it looked like it was supposed to be benefiting these drivers. And then my mom didn't vote for it. And I was like, well, why didn't you vote for it? Like, I thought this was supposed to benefit the drivers and so that they could have benefits and better pay. And she explained to me that like, it's, it was like a sort of like a, a false solution that like looked good, but it actually allows these companies to continue getting away with taking advantage of their workers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I guess the question now is what do we do about them having this much power to basically rewrite labor law in their favor, um, like they did in California. Um, so some options are, um, sorry, um, we could all just delete Facebook. We could turn off our computers, get off the grid. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that doesn't really solve the problem. Um, I personally, I don't use Facebook. Facebook still exists. Um, and I personally, by taking that action, can't fix the, the problem of these tech companies having so much power. Um, another possible thing that we hear about is Republicans talking about how unfair uh, big tech is to them. Um, and how they're censoring them and um, they favor liberals all the time, um, which it's wrong. It's like dumb and stupid, but it's also they are taking up um, the vacuum of criticizing big tech a lot, um, which I think people feel have this feeling that big tech is too powerful and these people are the ones that are saying it, but obviously it's, um, I don't know, wrong. So another idea is, um, like what Elizabeth Warren says, where um, we break up big tech. Um, this is a picture of Matt Stoller there. I don't know if you know him, but he's very big into like the anti-monopoly crowd. Um, yeah, so antitrust, anti-monopoly basically says break up all these companies um, into smaller subsidiaries, um, which I don't know, it sounds like a great idea. If I woke up tomorrow and Google um, was broken up, I think I'd be a little bit happier. I think the world might be a little bit better replaced, but that doesn't solve the root problem of um, how these companies um, got so much power in the first place. And I think as socialists, we are able to articulate that the problem itself is capitalism. And the only thing that can prevent this and combat this is worker power. Um, but yeah, pretty much the only thing that because these companies profit so much off of the labor of workers um, and they're only able to do that because the laborers work, if they stop working um, collectively, then um, they aren't able to make profits anymore, obviously, which, yeah. So there's some back, some history going back. Um, tech was kind of started to become a thing in like the seventies. Um, this was kind of around the time that neoliberalism was starting to take hold around the world. This is when um, unions were really starting to decline in the US. Um, yeah, and it's just a very um, highly educated white collar workforce that I guess didn't really see themselves in the same kind of vein as like factory workers um, who were generally more in unions than tech workers and engineers, especially. So this was kind of the formative period and then it kind of was there for the next, I don't know, 40 years or so. And I think um, through the Obama years, especially, there was this idea that um, these tech companies are gonna solve all of our problems. And I found this um, Time Magazine cover on Twitter a few days ago, um, can Google solve debt? Um, which is just like insane to want like this uh, huge unaccountable corporation to be like profiting off of um, like, making people live forever, you know, and it's who is going to be able to like access that is, I don't know, it's just insane that, I don't know, it just seems insane to me. Um, and it's just like this kind of optimism was there, I think, through the Obama years, um, which that doesn't mean there weren't problems in tech. There is sexism, there's racism, um, gig workers were still exploited during that time. They still are, obviously. Um, yeah, and there are things like the NSA, how tech was used to basically spy on um, everyone in the world, pretty much. Um, 
Yeah. So there was there were these problems with there was this feeling that tech could still do these great things. Um, and then the question is what changed? Um, and I think for a lot of tech workers, it was the election of Donald Trump that kind of made them realize like, oh, maybe tech could be used for bad things. I think right after his election, a lot of people at like Google were saying, is it are they gonna um make us build like a Muslim registry um for the government? Um, and then they start asking questions like, why are we building um, technology for ICE? Why are we building artificial intelligence that goes in um, drones that bomb children in the Middle East? Um, yeah, and then I think nothing like really changed in the tech industry. There was still these pro there were these problems beforehand that were still there. Um, exploitation of racism, sexism. Um, but I think there was just this idea about what the power was being used for, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, and since then, there have been a lot of collective actions in tech by tech workers. Um, this is a chart from a data source that kind of tries to document all the collective actions that have been taken by tech workers. And this is a monthly graph going back since 2011. <clears throat> and what it shows is, I don't know, up till about 2018, there weren't really that there wasn't that much frequency with how often these actions were taking place. And then around 2018, um, tech workers started um, organizing more and taking these actions up until a high point in March of 2020 when the pandemic started of about a little less than 15. Um, obviously, they were demanding like PPE, hazard pay, um, working from home during that month. Um, yeah, so obviously it's like, in an industry as large as the tech industry, like 15 actions, that's not a lot, but from where I was like a few years ago, that's like, I don't know, kind of, it's not like, I don't know, it's promising, like how much it's come from where it was, if that makes sense. Um, so who is doing this? Um, it's a lot of software workers. So there are full employees that are taking these actions and then contracted workers. So um, a company like Google, um, they, have about 100,000 workers, probably I think more than that, um, and about half of them are contracted. So they don't, they aren't guaranteed the same amounts of benefits and stability as full employees. Um, yeah, which is kind of crazy. Um, then they're gig and low wage workers. So Uber drivers, Instacart shoppers, um, Amazon warehouse workers, those kinds of workers. Um, and then there's the support staff. So people who work in like cafeterias at these companies, security guards, shuttle drivers, um, these are often contracted out um, by the company. So it's not like Facebook is hiring security guards. They hire a company to hire them. They're also usually unionized, which is interesting. Um, so why are they doing it? Um, one is pay and benefits. So I don't know, gig workers aren't paid very much. They get low wages. They don't get health care, no sick leave. Um, and it's just a shit job. So I don't know. Um, working conditions. Um, so in an Amazon warehouse, it's just brutally long hours, lots of standing, lifting boxes. Um, you're being monitored pretty much constantly. You have to meet a quota. You don't get breaks. Um, it's hard to like go to the bathroom. Um, so they're organizing around those kinds of issues. And then software workers particularly are organizing around ethical issues. So like I said earlier, ICE, the military, um, especially in recent years around climate change. So like why um, is Amazon, who has these this giant infrastructure of um, servers and like data centers, um, why that consumes a lot of energy and why is it not, why is it all on fossil fuels? Why is it not on clean energy? Um, yeah. So how are they doing this? They're doing strikes, they're doing protests and open letters. Um, and then promisingly, um, recent developments, um, unions. So in um, February of 2020, Kickstarter became the first tech company to um, unionize, um, which was white collar workers. Um, there's a really good podcast about just workers at Kickstarter telling the story of how this happened. Um, I can drop a link a little bit later. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, they were organizing around like um, discrimination in the workplace and um, control over the content. Kickstarter is like a crowdfunding platform. Um, yeah. So more with that, um, Google workers have started a minority union, which I think is an interesting topic that we could also talk about. 
uh, minority versus at Kickstarter where it's a fully union, um, which is kind of like unheard of for such a big company in the tech industry like Google. Um, yeah, and then finally um, at Amazon where um, workers at a warehouse in Bessemer, Alabama um, are voting right now over whether to um, organize that warehouse, which is, um, would be, it would be pretty crazy if that happened, um, especially at a company like Amazon. Um, yeah, so this is kind of just like, there's this emerging labor movement within the tech industry. Um, and it's got a lot of interesting class components to it, the difference between software workers and non-software workers. Um, but they hold a lot of power as workers over what the companies are doing. Um, and I think it's um, a really important thing that we should all be following. Um, so with that, if there are any questions.